Good evening, everybody. Today is the yard site of the Ismach Moshe. And there's a story that's apropos for the three weeks about the Ismach Moshe. The Ismach Moshe is always looking forward to Mashiach's coming. And he's, he's said that he remembered his past Gilgulim, his past reincarnations, one of which was during the destruction of the temple, uh, of which he's, uh, the Hasidim say that he was Yermio Anavi, he was Jeremiah. In any event, and not only the Hasidim said it, Siddiquim said it, the, the other the, the other Rebbe's uh, recognized that, that the Yismach Moshe, uh, Rabbi Moshe Teitelbaum, the, the first Hasidish Rebbe from the Teitelbaum family, a long rabbinical family before him, but then it became a, a Hasidish dynasty uh, somewhat after that. That's where we have, you know, Satmer, Sigit, and so forth, and a few others. In any event, uh, Yismach Moshe, like we said, he was, he was obsessed with Mashiach's coming, with the destruction of the base of Mikdash. And he was sitting and learning that he only had one son with Lazar Nissen, who later became the Rav and Drobich. And he was learning Gemara Tainus with his son of Lazar Nissen. And they came across a famous Gemara, classic Gemara, as, as our Mishkiach would say, uh, where it says, Koldarshin Eloi Nivna Beis HaMikdash Biyomov Kilo Nechrev Biyomov. Any generation in which the temple was not rebuilt, it's as if it was destroyed. And if it was not rebuilt in its days, it's as if it was destroyed in its days. And so Yismach Moshe turned to his, his son, Holy Red Laser Nissen, and he said, My son, what are we going to do with this? This is such a devastating condemnation of our generation and every generation since the base of Mictus was destroyed. So the replacer Nissen said, Tate, didn't, didn't you teach me? that the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash was not merely it, what, what does the Gemara say? that Hashem took out his anger al Eitzim al Avodim Gonzal say that, Medrash says that instead of wiping out the Jewish people God took out his anger on the building materials of the temple the wood and the stone of the temple and if that's the case, Chazal explained that we received an atonement for our sins from the destruction of the temple. And so therefore, we know that superficially there seems to be a connection between the way we observe Tisha B'Av and the way we observe Yom Kippur. So Tisha B'Av is a shtickle Yom Kippur in some ways. Obviously, not in every way. There's no from halacha and halacha, and there are other things. To the point where I remember one of my a, a, a rav of the shul where I grew up. He said, one of my rabbis said that if Yom Kippur is a day in heaven, Tishu B'av is a day in hell. But nonetheless, they're both the same. But the truth is, the destruction of the temple le uh, gave us atonement for our sins. And so therefore, any generation in which the temple was not rebuilt in its days, it's as if it was destroyed in its days, meaning that we too received that same atonement for our sins, just like that generation in which the temple was actually destroyed in its days. That's what replaced this and answered his father, the Halevi Yismach Moshe, and and the Yisrach Moshe said to the son of Lazar Nissan, Bani Necham Tani, Bani Necham Tani, my son, you have comforted me, my son, you have comforted me, and we shall all be zoicha to see that which it says called Misahabal al Yushalayim, zoicha veroya v'simchasa, that anyone who mourns over the destruction of Jerusalem is worthy to see its joy. It doesn't say that he will be worthy to see its joy, he is worthy and he sees the joy, meaning through the act of mourning. For the destruction of the base of Mikdash, we are worthy to see the joy right now, and we should all be worthy to actually experience that joy and receive that Nechama. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe, comment.
see you later